Hi everyone, my name is Kate Meyerhofer and I am the CCO of Kiva Planks. I also have a background in art education as well as teaching second and third grade. So I've had some experience building with blocks in my own classroom and I'm excited to share with you today some of the tips, tools, and um, the basic principles of building with Kiva Planks and allowing your students to explore their own creativity as well as develop their growth mindset in the classroom and hopefully give you a new way to build with blocks in your, in your classroom. So I'm excited to share with you my experiences and hopefully give you some great uh, takeaways that you can use on your own. So traditional blocks tend to be cube shape or various sizes and by using a single building unit and having plenty of them, you can change the dynamics of block play and block building. So rather than finding or looking for a specific shape, the students can think how can they build that shape with the blocks that they have. Many of you know and appreciate the power of block play. It introduces fine motor skills, gross motor skills, uh, center of gravity, balance, thinking three-dimensionally, the list goes on and on. And Kiva Planks allows the students or the child to, um, to explore those things and have fun um, without even knowing that they're learning. So learning and progress comes from the decisions and actions required to place each block. So by having many blocks, maybe 100, this one holds 200 blocks, we give students hundreds of opportunities to choose where, why, and how to place each block. It gives them time to conceive or to come up with new ideas and enough blocks to follow through on those ideas. So it gives them a lot of opportunity to explore and learn. My hope is that you build a tabletop community with your students and that by building together, it builds a stronger community and a closer connection to your students. So let's just start by playing and building. Usually that's um, how a lot of the learning gets started. You just say, hey, let's just start building. Um, how about we build a house? Let's start by making a house. So um, the students, a child might start stacking flat like this. You can, you can even encourage the students to try building something on their own, or they could also copy what you're doing. You can also have learning experiences that way. So they can build simply like this, or you could introduce, I wonder if you could build them on their edge. And then maybe thinking about the roof. So laying planks side by side. And you can ask them, what does your house roof look like? Does it, is it on an angle? Um, and then thinking through how to stack and build something that resembles that shape. And as you're building, you can say, what shape? What shape did we just make with that? Or what shape is this here? So again, you can encourage students to make their own or copy yours. Um, maybe we'll keep it simple. And after you've built some houses, you could say, let's make another house or another building. How about we do one over here? So starting to build something a little, starting to build something a little further away. I enjoy using the I wonder statement with a lot of my prompts. So I would say something like, I wonder how we could 
have people get from one place to another. And so it gets the students thinking about, well, maybe we could build a road or a sidewalk. So then we would start connecting our buildings together with a sidewalk or a road. You could also think like, what are some other things that you see in your neighborhood? Like a tree, and then you could say, I wonder how we can make a tree with Kegel planks. So I would usually start with two or one plank on the ground with three planks as the trunk. And then you could have students take turns placing a block on top and introducing the concept of balancing. And we can say, even though this doesn't really look like a tree we see outside, it represents a tree. And so using our imagination and thinking, this has a trunk and leaves, so therefore in my mind, I'm, I'm seeing it as a tree. Then you could say, where do you like to play? Do you like to play in a yard, a playground? So you could say, well, how about we build a yard around this house? So um, you just build simple, flat, or on edge planks to create something like this. You could say, what shape is this? And it's a square. And then uh, you could say something like, I wonder if we could build a swimming pool. So then just building on, you know, a simple square like this. Maybe it has a diving board. If someone lives by a lake, you could say, let's build a lake and just start going around and beyond and outlining a lake and saying, what can we find in a lake? a boat, okay? So how would we build a boat? And just building on top of that and encouraging the students to think beyond just this is a circle with planks, you know, just using their imagination and that growth mindset of how can we, how can we um, solve this problem of getting from one side of the lake to another and building a bridge or something like that. So there's so many opportunities and um, endless options for a student when um, using Kiva planks. Having the students remember something or use something from their own life or experience is what helps them visualize something before building it with Kiva planks. For example, I would say something like, let's build your yard or the, um, the school playground. So they already know like where the slide might be or where a bench is, and that helps them visualize what that would look like with Kibo planks. So it could, um, it really helps encourage them to just start building rather than looking at a plank and not really knowing where to start. So a good activity is saying, well, let's build, um, let's build the school playground. So doing a slide and uh, a lot of the time things might not be proportional or um, the slide might not exactly look like a slide, but allowing the students to experiment and try to build something that represents that really encourages them to um, use their imagination and it doesn't really matter what that slide looks like as long as they can say like, this is, this is the slide and this is the path that I use to walk around the track. And it really helps the students take ownership of their builds and get excited about what they're actually building. So we could build a track around the playground. There might be a softball field, so maybe you could just build a triangle, you know, that shows the different bases. Or if there's a tree that they really like to go stand under, could build another tree. This helps students understand their surroundings and um, it gives them a sense of place in, uh, in their classroom and where they live and what things look like around them and gives them, opens up their observation of the world.
Another activity is talking about the weather, um, simply asking what, what is the weather like outside? Is it hot? Is it cold? What makes things hot? And then um, having them build something that represents heat or, um, or what they see outside. So it could be a flat design, like just a sun. If it's cold outside, they could build a snowflake. You could talk about symmetry with the snowflakes. Not one, not two are the same. Where are some places where it's cold? Um, you could build an igloo. Or they could build a snowman. So you can do a seasonal activities, if it's fall building leaves, if it's winter building snowflakes, if it's spring building flowers, um, if it's summer building something that represents summer to them. This next activity requires a ball, a ping pong ball, a marble, um, so a light ball object. We have our Kiva balls as well. And this introduces students to simple machines of ramps and it is a really fun activity for young students because they love to see movement and um, kind of a, a kinetic sculpture, if you will. So I usually say, how can we get this ball from this spot to this spot using the Kiva planks? And so it presents a problem and in, encourages brainstorming or thinking about what is it that makes a ball move? and um, introducing that if it starts high and ends low, it's gonna start rolling. So um, you just start simply by stacking planks. I like to start with three and then maybe go to two. And you could show them how to do this first and then allow them to work in teams or groups to, to build their own ball run. So something as simple as this, and you can show them how, what experimentation means or trying things and if it fails, thinking about how can we fix that? And rather than saying, ah, oh, it didn't work, like I'm gonna just stop, then encouraging them to keep going and keep trying and testing it out. So testing um, is a great exercise with, with this, um, concept or this uh, activity. So if we roll it, that actually miraculously rolled all the way down the middle, but say it were to like roll off like that. You could ask the students, well, how can we fix that? And say, well, what if we create sides for it? And, and then we would test that out. And then we'd say, well, it rolled off a little bit. Let's just keep building the edge. And say we try it and it rolls down our ramp but off the table, how can we catch the ball? So thinking about, well, let's build a, a catcher or a, a, ball, a ball catcher, a ball holder. So using three planks simply to catch the ball. And um, this is just a really fun, you could call it a roller coaster activity, um, building a roller coaster for your ball. And it encourages the brainstorming, finding a problem, and finding a solution. We have these um, games and activities challenge card as well as some problem-based learning and open-ended STEAM challenges that come with our sets. So this has a lot of different activities from um, exploring plants, so creating a flower or talking about symmetry. Um, show and tell, build an object that some of something that you love and then tell it to the class. Or um, reading a story and then building something from that story. The, the possibilities are really endless and there's a lot of open-ended challenges and activities with this card. This also has our all-purpose Kiva lesson. So like I said before, it's kind of giving that challenge, allowing the students to build, 
observing what they've done and what other students have done and learning from each other and then the cleanup. So again, the Kibo planks are great for cleanup because uh, they're small, but they're all the same size. So it's really quick and easy. I have this Kiva mat that helps um, pick, pick up the planks all at once and slide them in. But you could really use anything like a piece of fabric um, or just another building surface. So a lot of the learning can come with asking questions from the students or the child's build. Like, what did you discover as you built? How did your project concept change from your original idea to your final idea or your final design? And these can be simplified, of course, for a, um, for a young child to say like, how can we fix this next time? Or simply just saying, tell me about what you've made and encourages the students to, um, to take ownership of their, of their build and feel proud of it. I hope this was helpful for you. If you want more ideas, you can check out our website, kivaplanks.com. And also on our social media, we post uh, things that other teachers have done in their classrooms, as well as um, just continual uh, ideas and inspiration for, for you or for a child. So um, our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook are great places to get some more ideas. If you have any more questions, you can email us at info at Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope that you enjoy the new ways to play with blocks using Kiva Planks. Mm -hmm.